So we're gonna do this a little bit different this time. So this is video number three. Uh, there's only gonna be four total. So we're, we're winding down, we're getting down close to the last little bit of this class. Um, so the, the way that I'm gonna do this today is just this short little opening, kind of explain what we're gonna do. And then I'm gonna share my screen and get into it. And actually at the end, um, I'll walk through the assignment that you're gonna have. So things that we're gonna talk about today are gonna to be business plans, and more specifically, or most specifically, the executive summary, which is just happens to be one of the parts um, to an actual business plan. And so that's really gonna be the part that I, I zero in on and really focus on and, and uh, hope that you get a good understanding of it. So before we get into business plans, what I'm gonna do is I wanna walk through something that's called a profit and loss statement. Um, this is something that's really, really important for companies to have. Uh, you know, I certainly hope that uh, most businesses keep track of these numbers, these statistics, uh, so that they can make adjustments and changes. That's really ultimately the most important thing to do with the, uh, with the uh, profit and loss statement. And also it helps you when you claim taxes, your income tax, um, and, and just kind of knowing where your money is coming from, where it's, where it's going out at, and so that you can make adjustments and, and budget accordingly. Uh, by you know just simply looking in one place for it. So it's gonna be a pretty simple spreadsheet. We'll do it in Google Sheets. So that'll be the first part that we get into. Then we'll get into the business plan itself and more or most specifically, the executive summary. I'm gonna walk through all of this stuff with you uh, on my screen share. So then that way you've got it. And so then that way you can refer back to it if you ever need to. The way that I start this off with this thing called a profit and loss statement is I get into Google and uh, I go into a sheet. So scroll down here to sheets. And I just open up a blank sheet. Up here at the top, I'm going to call this P&L statement. That just stands for profit and loss. This is a place where companies uh, keep track of, of uh, the money that they spend and the money that, they have br uh, that they're bringing in they, uh, so that they can take a look at their revenue which is the money that uh, that they have coming in, and then they take a look at their expenses, and then they subtract those two numbers, and that really determines on if they made money or if they lost money for the the week, the month, um, the year. You know, really, we're we're going to look at uh, all of these things at the end of a year. Okay, so start off. We go up here and we just call this. It's your business. So whatever your company name is going to be. Income statement is what I like to label next. And then we're just going to do 2019 end of year. Okay, so if you take accounting, if, if you're familiar with accounting at all, you'll see things like this, that uh, these statements, and uh, this should certainly be a part of, uh, part of accounting, you know, because that's really ultimately what it is, is just tracking these numbers. So we're going to start off with revenue. And like I said, revenue is the money that you're bringing in. These are the total sales that you have. Okay, so this is all the money that you would make or bring in. I don't want to say make because I don't want it to be confused with profit. Uh, so we're going to start with that. This next one is going to be expenses. And then these are going to be the expenses underneath of it. So let's start with taxes, insurance. I'm going to make my screen just a little bit bigger here. Uh, insurance, and then we will go to payroll, which that's the people that uh, might be full-time um, full-time employees for your company, staff that could be part-time people that you employ, yep. utilities, production costs, legal bills, building expenses, advertising, rent, travel, and then we're going to do something called office supplies. Okay, so the way that we figure this now, um, I'm going to label this as total cost of expenses, and then we will do net income or or loss. Okay, we're hoping obviously that, uh, that we have money left at the end. Uh, so I'm going to pull this over just a little bit, and uh, actually, I'm just going to leave this for now. Um, so let's just start with, we brought in, let's say that we brought in $125,000 for the year. Okay, so now what we could do is we could go up here and uh, we could actually change this to currency, format as currency. That's going to be our revenue, okay? This column, this is just the, the, the title, the, 
uh, so we're gonna let me just move this over and so it so that you understand that this is just something that is kind of blocked off here okay um, so now let's start with taxes let's say that we paid in twenty five thousand dollars in taxes for the year ten uh, ten thousand dollars for insurance that's what I've got written down sixty thousand for our payroll twenty five hundred dollars for our part-time staff Utilities is going to be a thousand. Production we spent. Oh, let's see, we spent ten thousand in production. Uh, legal bills. You know, maybe this is the first year that you had your company and you had to get everything set up and things like that. Ten thousand dollars for building expenses. Advertising. We spent six thousand dollars for, and then rent. Our rent was twelve thousand. Travel. We spent out forty-seven fifty. And then office supplies, $2,000, okay? So these are our expenses. Everything down here, we need to figure out how much money did we spend to uh, have this company function and operate, okay? So we're going to add these up real quick. So I'm going to go down to here. So it'll drop here for me. And I'm going to go up to my functions, go to sum, hit enter, and, and it's going to figure 147,250, okay? So that's what our expenses were. So now, how did we do? Well, let's figure that out. We made made money or lost money. Equal sign. We go go up to our revenue minus our expenses. We hit enter, and now it looks like we lost twenty two thousand two hundred fifty dollars for that first year. Okay, or whatever year this was. Now the nice thing about having this formula is, let's say that there was some revenue that I didn't include. Okay, so actually I brought in one hundred and seventy five thousand. Okay, now it automatically calculates. And now it's a a change of $27,750 ahead for profit. Okay, that's a profit and loss statement. Um, I, I went through it pretty quickly because I just kind of wanted to expo expose you to it. Um, now, if I were keeping track of this by month, easy way for me to do this would just be uh, would be to hit the plus sign and then I could just make a new one and call it January uh, 2000, whoops, 2019. Okay, so I could put all of those expenses simply on that. Okay, or an even easier way, here's a little quick tri uh, tip for you on using sheets. I could just duplicate. Now it's got all that stuff in it. Now I could call this February or whatever if I wanted to. Okay, So that's a little bit about profit and loss statements. Like I said, just wanted to kind of expose you to it. That is really what it looks like. Now we're going to get into business plans. Plans, the way that I'm going to do this is I want to, uh, I'm going to type these in here for you and I, I can I'll send you this uh, as well as kind of a template um, so first thing that I want to do is I want to come up here and just call this business plan and uh, these are going to be tips okay these so what is a business plan that that really would be the first question that that I would ask you you know does anybody know what a business plan is have you ever heard of it well the first part of this I'm gonna give you three tips on uh, on what to do with a business plan and then the last part of it is I'm gonna walk through uh, the different things that would be included inside of the business plan now what is it so really to kind of sum it up a business plan is just something that you put into place to keep track of what it is that you're doing um, who you're competing with uh, uh, how you come up with different prices it's really just a summary of, of everything that um, that it that it involves or takes for you to start your business, run your business, and grow your business. Those are really the big things that we want to take a look at here. So the, here's three really important tips for you when it comes to creating a business uh, a business plan. So keep it short. What does that mean? Uh, that means that uh, first, nobody is going to read a 100 page or even a 40 page plan okay it doesn't need to be that big it really really should be simple uh, the reason is is because you want to come back to it you want to make changes to it um, you know there's things that you want to do with it so you know that that's really come back to it to revise okay so that's gonna be the reason that that I say to keep it short uh, next one is know your audience Okay, so what does that mean? Well, you need to you need to write it in a language that people can understand. 
Okay, so if I was going to try to get investors, and I'm I'm ta I'm talking to people that are not necessarily uh, well. Let's just take my the business that I was in before uh, I went back to school and became a teacher, the mixed martial arts promotion. If I were talking to somebody that had no clue what it was on on what that whole business even looks like, what that industry is, it's not going to make any sense to them. So I need to know who's going to be reading it and write it in a language that will make sense to them. Okay. Um, number three, don't be intimidated. Okay, so don't be intimidated. That is going to be tip number three. Um, again, you know, the thing that I want to say about don't be in, being intimidated by it is uh, keep it simple. Okay, you don't want it to be so big, so long, so such big words, things that, that aren't going to make sense to you. Uh, that's not going to be encouraging for you to do anything with it and to revise it, change it, help it uh, grow and, and do all of these things with. Okay, so those are, uh, that's kind of it for, for tips. I, I really, you know, those are the kind of the main things that I like to discuss with this. Now, what is in it? Um, well, let's start with the executive summary. And this is actually going to be the piece that we look at the most here in a minute. And this is what your assignment's going to be over. Okay, the executive summary. What's the executive summary? Um, well, this is an overview of your business and your plans. Okay, it's a summary. It's exactly what its name is. Um, number two, opportunity. And what's the opportunity? Uh, this answers the questions. Okay, this answers question, the questions. Uh, what are you actually selling? What makes this a business? So, fine line between a business and a hobby. Okay, so understand the difference between those things. Um, the, uh, the other part of it could be what makes this a business. Uh, who is competition and who am I marketing to? Okay, so those are going to be the things that, that we discuss when it comes to opportunity. Third one is execution. And what is execution? Well, how do I solve a problem? Really what you need to understand here is not everybody goes into business just to make money, okay? If you are going into business just to make money, it's going to be really, really difficult, okay? There's got to be a problem that you're trying to solve, and that's really what the execution part of the business plan talks about, okay? What, what am I going to solve? How am I going to do it? And those types of things. All right, number four, there's only a couple more of these, uh, team and company. Um, who is going to work? for me. Oops. Who will I hire and how? So that's the team and company. That's going to be, you know, the people that uh, that specifically and physically work alongside of you. All right, two more and then we get into more zeroing in on the on the uh, executive summary. So financial uh, financial plan and Really what the financial plan is, how are you going to make money? What is it going to cost? All expenses is really what I want to have here, okay? Uh, last one, number six, this is the appendix. And this is going to be the place, this is going to be the place that has details about anything else. Okay, this is just kind of the, the last little part um, of what needs to, you know, anything extra that needs to go into this plan that didn't fit into one of those categories, okay? So that wraps it up for business plan, and now we're going to get into executive summary. And uh, actually, you know what You know what I'm going to do is I am going to, I'm going to stop there, and I am going to op open up a new doc this is going to be your template for your assignment, okay? 
you will have an assignment specifically that gets into uh, writing a business, um, just the executive summary. It's going to be short. Okay, so executive, whoops, executive summary. All right, so here's what goes into that. Okay, remember from the last, I don't know, two minutes ago or however long ago it was, I shared with you the, the very first part of your business plan. This is the part that, that really gets into, uh, um, you know, the finer details, the greater details about your company itself. Okay, so here's your template. Executive summary. Okay, so I'm going to come down here, hit enter a couple times. There's only a handful, two, four, uh, five different parts. There's really only five different parts to this executive summary. Okay, so the product description or objective. And this is going to be the company is a, and then that's what you're going to put in here. Okay, this is going to be two sentences. This does not have to be anything longer than that. Okay, so for your assignment, this product description or objective is going to be um, just a couple sentences. Example, my company is a mixed martial arts business. We host or hold MMA events across the Midwest. Okay, so if I was still in business, this is how I would start out. This is my product. It is promoting mixed martial arts events, okay? Um, putting on events throughout the Midwest and uh, showcasing different athletes from all over the country, okay? So that's how I would start off. That's what my example would be um, for this portion of it, okay? I know I said two sentences, two to three, something along those lines. All right, next one is going to be target audience. And really what the target audience is going to consist of um, would be audience, age, gender, etc. Who's coming to your event or who's coming to your business? Who's buying your product? So example of mine, uh, the audience, um, the fans consist of I don't know, let's say male 55% and female 45%. When I first started in uh, mixed martial arts, it was probably 70-30. And now, you know, before I really got out of it, um, it was looking, you know, much, much closer. It seemed like, uh, um, you know, the numbers were a lot closer in that, uh, in gender and, and that type of thing. So um, that's what I could put down for the audience you know, that type of thing. Uh, oh, I guess I could do it. age range of, you know, probably say 18 to 54, something along those lines. So when you go to put this in for your company, like if you use, you know, Nike running shoes, um, you know, look at some statistics that might talk about who wears those shoes, but more, you know, who wears them right now? What age range of people and that type of thing. Okay, so that's going to be that one. Uh, competition. For this one, other companies that sell my product, um, that's what you could put down. So if you chose Nike, you could put Adidas, you know, running shoes, you could put Asics, you could put whatever it is, other companies that sell the same product. Now for mine, what I would what I would say is yes, other MMA promotions, but more importantly, other events in the market. Okay, that, that was just as competitive for me than any promotion out there, if not more. What's going on inside of the market? What's going on in, in the economy that could affect uh, from these people spending their hard-earned money on? Um, that's really what competition is going to look at as well. Uh, two more parts, risk and opportunities. Uh, for risk and opportunities, what we're going to talk about is the main risk involved is, and then my example would be, <laughs> um, people not having expendable income. What that means is people don't have extra money, you know, kind of like what's going on right now. People may not have extra money to go out and, and spend, you know, if they lost their job, that type of thing. Okay, so if they don't have, or another risk, too many events 
in the area. Okay, um, those are risks that could hurt a company. Now, opportunities. The biggest one would be uh, the biggest one would be ability to be the best. Okay, whatever it is that you're selling or doing. Um, you know, so you just need to have one, one to two of those for one risk, one of opportunity. That's fine with me. And then our last one is going to be conclusion. Okay, here's what we want to put for the conclusion. The company has room for growth because, and then you can go into details. Okay, um, give me, let's do three sentences here. Okay, answer the why. Answer why the company has room for growth, that type of thing. Okay, that just summarizes it. All right, well, that sums it up for executive summary. Business plans, we went through profit and loss statements. Anyways, that is it. Your assignment should look just like this. This is all that it is, okay? So it's roughly about a half a page. Um, use my template, fill in these answers. You can choose any product that you want out there. I don't care. You should be able to find some details or if it's a product that you're familiar with, you'll know who the audience is and the people that use it um, and that, you know, any, any kind of details, okay? Uh, the trickiest part is gonna be this risk and, op and opportunities. Try to be creative when you're thinking about these things. Think about if put your put yourself in the per, uh, in the position of business owner. Okay, now you're thinking about a business owner. So this is going to be it. This is your assignment, executive summary. Go ahead and and look over my uh, template if you'd like, and then answer those questions. You can choose any product out there that you'd like. Of course, it's got to be school appropriate. All right, have a great week, everyone. Hopefully, you enjoyed this video. And uh, hopefully this was helpful. We've only got one left, and that is going to be a virtual Shark Tank. All right, have a great day.